I just couldn't shake the feeling that the streets were trying to talk to me. I don't mean out loud, I wasn't hearing voices, but I was becoming increasingly aware of a certain presence. A presence which seemed to be communicating itself through a series of signs, traces and clues. But what did it all mean? Was there some deeper significance? Something I was missing? If the streets really were trying to talk to me, then I was going to need an interpreter. I first came across the work of local historian Ben Waddington via a YouTube video that I happened upon by chance. It was a recording of a typography tour that Ben had led in 2008 around Digbeth, an area with which I was familiar. Who was this strange man who seemed to see magic in everything, who could extract information from the smallest of details revealing the multiple layers of history embedded in the streets around us. This was a man who knew how to read the signs. If the streets did have something to tell me, then Ben was surely the person who could teach me how to listen. We met on a bright but chilly autumn afternoon. The skies were clearing after a brief but ferocious downpour. The streets of Digbeth had been cleansed and were ready for us. Ben kindly agreed to be recorded for this film, and he proceeded to explain why it is that he enjoys showing words to people. Okay. So one of the reasons I like to do um, type tours, to actually take people in groups out into the street, is that type behaves differently than it does on the page or on the screen. And it's, it's more of a challenge, and more, more of an environment, a specific environment, to put those words to convey something to people directly. And um, if you've learnt how to arrange type on a, a rectangle, on a screen, on a page, you're going to have an extra challenge when you're faced with a, a gable or a, a strange shape, oblong, to put the lettering to convey what your shop or um, business premise is going to convey to people. So my attention was drawn a few years ago to this, this sign. Um, it reads, Dowson Taylor and Company, Manchester. And at first I thought, well, this is the company. Maybe their HQ is Manchester and this is the Birmingham branch. And so we're presented with a riddle, I think. What, what does the sign mean? Who is it for? There's tiny lettering, barely visible at all from ground level. You have to assume that there is lettering up there and then spot it and then uh, try and decipher what the small lettering actually says. Um, to try and solve it I looked up what um, Dowson Taylor actually did and their business was sprinkler systems so I wondered whether we were just seeing an advert for sprinkler systems inserted into this other um, uh, manufactory. It was clear that I was going to have my work cut out for me my camera was no match for Ben's superhuman eyesight, and he knew it. I started to think that he was just toying with me. So this sign that we're outside now is uh, Wilcox, and they were manufacturers of gas fittings. And the reason I know that is because if the light is falling on this building in, in the right manner, uh, you can just pick out the, um, the remainders of letters that spell that out. So this would once have been quite a magnificent, certainly expensive uh, terracotta moulded clay sign. And I also noticed that Wilcox on the extreme left of the sign is actually smoothed over quite nicely and that's the hardest to read. And as the sign uh, progresses, the, the, the smoothing off work is slightly rougher each, uh, with each successive letter as the whoever's been hired to do that smoothing becomes fed up of the job and uh, realise just how much time is being involved or maybe the 
the supervisor said, can you, can you speed the work up if he was being paid by the hour? Ben was obviously trying to sabotage my film by taking me to things that he knew would be difficult to capture on camera. Was he deriving some sort of sick pleasure out of my struggle? Or was he trying to teach me a lesson about the limitations of my chosen medium? Whatever his motivation, the final straw came when he took me to the site of not one, not two, but three signs, none of which exist anymore. So a couple of intriguing ghost signs uh, on this, this, this corner, Birchall Street. Um, the one business that's operating here today is BA Welding and Fabrication. Uh, but there are two other, at least two other companies that are uh, revealing their presence through a ghostly spectra of lettering. Uh, perhaps the more visible is the Midland Flower Company. So that's just above the street name Birchall Street. And I don't know how old that is. It could have been in the 40s, uh, at least. The, um, the Midland Flower Company were operating from here. And I assume that it was their premise rather than an advert, because it, this wasn't a public thoroughfare. Uh, so that was an, an intriguing sign to uncover. And then my attention was caught by the big white oblong above that, I think the only reason that you would paint at that height something white and just that, that, that little uh, aperture is to obliterate a sign. And the longer that I looked at the, the white section, the more it became clear that there were different tones and eventually, uh, well, to me it looks like um, three big initials, SSK, emerged uh, from beneath the sign. The third sign in this location is one which did exist in 2008 when Ben did the YouTube tour, but has since been painted over. This is my favourite part of that video, so here it is in full. So uh, when you examine um, um, signs like this, they kind of tell a story, you know, a simple story, a story nonetheless. Uh, starting at the, the top, the, the first line is pretty shaky. Um, the curves don't quite work. Um, and it looks like when you get to the, the second line, they're actually drawing around perhaps a steel rule, everything that would perhaps involve uh, a curve, a letter that would need a curve, is uh, squared off completely. Uh, whereas in the, in the, the top line, um, the, there is an outline of um, <laughs> magic blue magic marker that's been um, glossed in with uh, thick, uh, green paint. Uh, but on the curves, the, the, the guys really become quite panicky. He hasn't liked curves and <laughs> not really know what to do. The, the R especially, well this is my favourite letter in, in a, a 10 mile radius. <laughs> style of doing things, you know, they're using the bricks as a kind of a template or a, a, a grid and uh, being true to that. And in, the, it's all in capitals, apart from the I's, which have um, their own, uh, they're, they're all lowercase and um, slightly above the line, just, uh, but consistently so, you know, that they, there are rules here. I think um, it, and spacing is good as well, is the other thing, that the spacing is good. So uh, it's, I'm very interested when uh, uh, people who can't do um, design have a go anyway and create something new. And uh, another story maybe is um, that the prices that have changed slightly and uh, this extra caveat that's been put up, I imagine like a gigantic um, lorry, uh, articulated lorry appearing and saying, well, I want to be clean for your, your stated top price. And they've, they've had to qualify it that the prices vary on the larger vehicles <laughs> the next time that happens. <laughs> so there it is. Just, uh, when, you, when you start to look at something that's 
doesn't seem to have anything uh, going for it, you know, a, a bit of a study, you know, all sorts of stories can come out of it. Ben says that sometimes, when people paint over signs like this, they may use the wrong type of paint, and as time passes and the paint job is subject to weathering, the layers are gradually stripped away until finally the original sign is visible once more. Ben has faith that that will be the case here, and that one day the car valeting sign will emerge triumphant like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Eventually, Ben did show me some examples of signs that still exist, but unfortunately, there's no time to go into any of it now, so you'll just have to take my word for it that it was all very interesting. I learnt how to decipher a particularly cryptic sign for an exclusive club. I learnt how to appreciate the exquisite levels of artistry and craftsmanship that go into clay lettering such as this and I got schooled in the issues surrounding the age-old debate of whether or not it's ever okay to use Comic Sans. I'm sorry I can't share all this with you, but then again, perhaps it's for the best that we've run out of time, because the most important thing that I've learnt is that if you really want to hear what the streets have to say, then you need to get out there. You need to feel the cobbles beneath your feet, and breathe the air into your lungs. You need to be present, and you need to look very, very closely. Mm -hmm.